In part one of this video series, I started building my own CO2 laser cutter. At the end of that video, I test fired the laser tube. If you haven't seen part one of this video series yet, go ahead and watch that first and then come back here. In this video, I'm also gonna test fire the laser tube, but first I need to design and build a frame and assemble all the parts together. Hi everyone, my name is Zach, and if you're like me, sometimes you get crazy ideas, like I'm gonna build my own CO2 laser cutter. Sometimes these ideas get trapped in your head and they never make it out into the real world, and that's what I'm here to fix. Here on Bite Size Engineering, I make ridiculous projects like this to get you excited about making things and unleashing your inner maker. I have to apologize, my desk is an absolute mess. I'm just moving into this house, so everything's kind of scattered everywhere. I'm still unpacking, so please just ignore the mess. I've got the model of this laser cutter on my computer here, and I'm trying to figure out what type of material I need to build the frame out of. In my career as an engineer, I got to use all sorts of different materials building fixtures and assemblies and that kind of stuff and we often use this aluminum extrusion material. You've probably seen this material before used in 3D printers or CNC machines. It's kind of like an erector set for engineers. That's perfect for this project because I'm still kind of figuring things out and designing as I go and so if I need to change something this material will allow me to do that. For example let's say I wanted to join these two pieces at a right angle here. I've 3D printed this just for this example but these will usually come as a cast aluminum which are a lot stronger than a 3D printed filament. The aluminum extrusion has these little t-slots that you can slide nuts into and then screw down these brackets to make a really strong joint. Let me show you how that works. So as you can see by using these little brackets and this aluminum extrusion you can build up structures to be whatever you need them to be. This triangular gusset bracket is kind of the most common 90 degree bracket that you'll see in this type of construction. But for my project I know that I'm going to enclose it using some panels that I'm going to slide into these slots and these triangular gussets kind of get in the way. So I did a little bit of research and I found this little internal 90 degree bracket and I think this is going to work a lot better for my project because it doesn't get in the way of me sliding in the panels. I'm going to go ahead and start assembling the frame using these little internal 90 degree brackets. Let me take a quick second and tell you about the sponsor of this video and that's Altium. Altium Designer is a professional PCB design environment. In my career as an electrical engineer, I got to use a whole bunch of different PCB design software. Some of it was good and some of it was pretty horrible. In my opinion, there is nothing out there that compares to Altium Designer when it comes to professional features. Altium Designer has a cloud design environment called Altium 365. This allows you to collaborate with other people and as well as work on different machines without losing your work. If you're ready to take your PCB design to the next level, here's what you're gonna do. Go down into the description and you'll find two different links. Click on the first one to get a free trial to Altium Designer. After you've installed it on your computer, you're gonna open it up and start playing around with it. You're gonna see how easy it is to create your own schematic and do your own board layout. Once you've decided you're ready to go beyond that free trial, go back in the description and click on that second link. This will give you a 30% discount when you decide to purchase a license of Altium Designer. This is a really big deal. Altium has been a longtime sponsor of this channel and I really appreciate them supporting my channel and our community. I've made quite a bit of progress here on assembling the frame out of the aluminum extrusion. You can see that it's starting to take shape. The problem I'm running into now is that I didn't order enough of these little 90 degree internal brackets. I did order more, but I've gotta wait a couple days for them to come, so I can't make any more progress on assembling the frame, but luckily there's lots of other things that I need to do. This is the CO2 laser tube that you saw in part one of the video series. It's just a giant glass tube, and so I need to figure out a way to mount this to my frame. So I need to design and 3D print a mounting bracket for the laser tube that allows me to screw it into the frame and give me a little bit of adjustment. So here's what I've come up with. I've got this little bracket that will actually slide into the aluminum extrusion just like this, and I can tighten those screws down and adjust the height here. The laser tube will kind of sit in this little slot, and I've actually designed in little holes for a zip tie to go around and kind of cinch down and tighten that tube to these mounts. This should provide a really great way to mount the CO2 laser tube and be able to adjust it up and down.
this is a perfect place to demonstrate how to use these little internal brackets to mount this laser tube mount. So I'm gonna slide two of them in like this into the T-slot. And then I can slide this piece over top of those brackets and then tighten down the nuts and that creates a really strong joint. Of course, I've printed a second one of these tube mounts and that will go here. That will allow the laser to sit in these little mounting brackets along the back of the machine. So as you can see, if I would have used this triangular gusset style of bracket, it would have been in the way when I go to slide in the quarter inch acrylic to enclose the machine up. But by using this little internal 90 degree style, I only have to notch out just a little bit here and I can slide a panel in here and it will make everything look really nice. While I've been waiting for those brackets to arrive, I've been working on a couple of tasks. This laser cutter will have an X and Y gantry, which allows it to move left and right, backward and forward. Well, that gantry needs to ride on some sort of ball bearings, and I think eventually I'm going to use some linear bearings, but I haven't ordered those quite yet. So in the meantime, I designed and 3D printed this little plate adapter, which accepts some V-wheels. When I screw these on, I can slide this onto the aluminum extrusion, and that will allow my gantry to move left and right and forward and backward. Those brackets that I ordered finally arrived yesterday afternoon, so I spent a bunch of time completing more of the frame, and I'm really happy with how this has turned out so far. Now I'm ready to start assembling the X and Y gantry so I can move the laser head back and forth. Before I test fire the laser tube, let me just quickly go over the construction of this frame. Like I said, I used aluminum extrusion. A lot of the bigger pieces are 20 by 40 millimeters, and then some of the smaller structural pieces are 20 by 20 millimeters. Because I was able to buy all of these aluminum extrusion pieces at the right length, the only waste I've had so far in this whole project is this little one inch piece right here. Speaking of length, let me tell you about the dimensions of this machine. The width of this machine is 1500 millimeters wide, and it is 1,000 millimeters deep. It's about 250 millimeters tall, so this should allow me to fit pretty large pieces of material in here without worrying about size. As I showed earlier in the video, I made a 3D model of this project. Because I used Fusion 360, I was able to design it parametrically, and that means I'm able to update the dimensions on the fly. So I ended up going with this pretty large machine, but if you were to build one of these your own, you could make it much smaller using my 3D model. When I'm done with this whole project, I'm gonna to put together a digital build guide and that's going to include a bill of materials as well as the Fusion 360 model if you wanna build one of these your own. Like I said, you can update the model to be whatever size you want, then you can just buy the aluminum pieces in the sizes that you need. Here we go for a second time. I'm gonna test fire the 100 watt CO2 laser tube in three, two, one. That never gets old. I still have so much to do on this project. If you click here, you can watch part three of this video series where I install the linear rails as well as the belt drives and stepper motors. Thanks for watching this video and I'll see you next time.